Hey Danny, how you doing, man? It's a gas mask. I'm sorry? <laughs> it's a gas mask. A what? It's a gas mask. <laughs> I I um I uh, I've never seen John Sim in anything other than Doctor Who, but he's really bloody good at this, isn't he? Yes. It's um it's like I say, he balances the um the sort of performative unhingedness. Wow, that's not a word. The performative the performative madness of the master with the cold calculating. Actually, I'm a bit of a prick side of the master. Yeah, so that's quite nice. You know, he set he set the trend for for future incarnations with Missy and uh, mm-hmm. Sasha Dewan's fantastic performance. Um, yes. This is going to be a bit of a bit of a controversial opinion. I want <gasps> the master to go back to being a calculating, snobbish arsehole again, please. Because mm. well, I suppose it's, it doesn't seem that absurd. Guy Henry could play him. Oh Christ! Hang on, Guy Henry. <laughs> he would be a great master. Um, it's, I recognise him from Holby City. Uh, I don't think I've seen any of these things that he's done. He played. Uh, um, he played Grand he was in Moff. Star Wars. Yeah, he played Grand Moff Tarkin, like Peter Cushion, who, who obviously played him, and the original had died, so they did like, um, what do you call it? Uh, what's what's the facial? What's it called? <laughs> I, I I'm not entirely sure what you're saying. What are you tra- what are you what are you talking about? What are you describing? They they put someone's face on him. Yeah, they put Peter Cushing's face on him. Like a deep fake. Yeah, but like for a film. But not horrifically illegal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> not not Jim Carrey in The Shining, just, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like a deep fake, but not massively petrifying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> like yeah, a deep fake, but not a massive concern for, you know, everything about modern culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. But he could be a good master, mm. I think. Maybe he could be, yeah. Like I say, I haven't seen him in anything. Apparently he was in um, V for Vendetta, which I have seen many years ago. He was. Uh, he was in Deathly Hallows Part one I oh yeah he played the weird guy with the long hair oh yeah there's only one of them <laughs> no the, the what do you mean? one of voldemort's dudes who became the minister of magic um uh let me have a look oh was, yeah and he's got a little uh, the world's shittest beard that I've yeah ever seen in he was a, yes. he looks like the guy from the hunger games you know, uh, Seneca, Seneca Crane, or is that his? Seneca, Seneca, <laughs> Seneca Crane that had the incredibly intricately shaped beard. Yeah, that guy. Which is one of the the best pieces of world building I've ever seen. Absolutely. Because normally, when when there's a bit of world building, it's there, and you go, oh, that's nice, oh, that's interesting, oh, that means it's X, Y, Z. Yeah. But what the fuck does it mean that he's got such an intricate beard? Yeah. What it, could that possibly it mean? It tells you so much about uh, the world and... It it does. You're completely yeah. right. But we're not here to talk about Seneca Crane. <laughs> we're here to talk about Doctor Who, season three, episode thirteen. It may you may think it's uh, uh, twelve, but you're wrong. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, um, that's the one. Let's alienate our listeners as much as we can. Yeah, you're wrong. You big dick. You big no, dick. Uh, carry on listening, please. <laughs> we depend <laughs> upon you. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> This episode is called uh, The Sound of Drums and it uh, was directed by Colin Teague and was written by Russell T Davies and is starring uh, David Tennant, Free Madgerman, John Barrowman, John Sim, uh, Adoa Ando, Trevor Laird, uh, Reggie Yates and Alexandra Moen. And there's other people, obviously, but, you know, mm. calm down. I have to... Sorry, Chuck. Didn't we say we weren't going to say John Barrowman? Oh, I'm so- name? shit. I'm sorry. I'll do it again. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll do it again. Um, yeah, this episode is called uh, The Sound of Drums, and it was uh, directed by Colin Teague and was written by Russell T. Davies and is starring David Tennant, Freema Adjaman, uh John Sim, Adoa Ando, uh, Trevor Laird, Reggie Yates, and Alexandra Moen, and other people. Yes, other people too. Uh, Colin Stinton as president. Uh, I like going down the ba- the bottom of a of a cast list on IMDb. Oh yeah, you just start getting things that is even more ridiculous. Sorry, um, Anne, Anne Wed- Widdicombe. Yeah, Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> Sharon Osbourne as Sharon Osbourne. McFly as McFly. I yeah. must say, Anne Widdicombe played herself 
expertly. You know, she just she did. She nailed it. New to the role, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, really arseholiness. You know, just right in mm, there, mm. it really worked. Really worked. Remember when she was on Strictly Come Dancing? Did you ever? What, did you watch that when she was on Strictly Come Dancing? Oh, I hope not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, they like lowered her down from the ceiling in this one particular performance, and I remember watching it, thinking, even as a child that I was at the time, I remember watching it and thinking, like, am I? having some kind of stroke or something it was the most surreal thing i've ever seen in my life it was bizarre yeah i mean i think it's come to something that the only politician in the real world in this tv show in this episode uh that that vouches for the master vouches for a guy who essentially exterminates one tenth of the population and mm-hmm. that person is Anne widdicombe which is very interesting um, but if I'm we not... get sued for like slander or something, then you're paying it. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying anything that Anne Widdicombe has done in real life. I'm just saying in this, her character, who is herself, uh, vouched for a guy who destroyed the planet. So true. I mean, that's a very good point. Yeah. I'm not, so... That's not. That's not slander or libel. That's true. <laughs> she re- she fucking read she fucking read the script, Lewis, and said well, yes. Maybe she, maybe she didn't. Maybe they oh. said, and and do you want to just be in this? Or she was just stood there outside the Houses of Parliament, like uh, excuse me, Anne Whittacombe, do you want to be in this? Yes, okay. And she was just there. She ready must, to go. She must be a fan of Doctor Who, otherwise I don't think she would have done it. Which maybe is so interesting. <laughs> It is, isn't it? It's such she a... has a number of terrible opinions. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, they're not even terrible in the sense of, oh, it's a political issue, it can be argued either way. No, they're just they're just straight up yeah. wrong and terrible. They so, are. Uh, it, it's bizarre to, to know that she watches something so as, 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 as left-wing and progressive as Doctor Who. Yeah, absolutely. And also... Oh well, good old, good old Anne Whittacombe. Good, good Whittacombe. Um, right, do you have an opening statement? Um, I do have an opening statement. Um, oh no, it's the all is lost moment. I wonder what will come next. Will they save the day? What will happen? I can't wait to find out. Yeah. Um, it's good, isn't it, this episode? Yep, it is good. Um, John Sims running around with his laser screwdriver. Oh, That's very good, isn't it? Who'd have Sonic. Um, yeah, it's, mm. it's, uh, let's, let's get into the nitty gritty of, of, uh, okay. of, of the great world building do you know what I, um, you know when martha says i was gonna vote for him why do people say that as if it's like a presidential like election yeah it's because it, yeah we don't yeah, vote for prime great, ministers in this country we vote for parties no. and then the parties mm. get to choose <laughs> it's so mm. weird yeah it, i mean in theory it works better than a presidential system but in practice, it's much of a muchness, really, yeah, between the two. But that's but like, like, yeah, it's like there's a party of like everyone that's really nice, but there's one guy that is the biggest cock in the entire world, and he gets voted for, and it's like, whoa, I didn't want this. I wanted the party of nice people. It's like, well, we get to choose, you know. Uh, uh. But yeah, that that might just be me. Um, it could just be you. Who knows? Um, I've. I've got a piece of trivia. Are you ready for this? Prepare yourself for a piece of trivia. Um, when the Doctor and the Master are speaking to one another on the phone, they are actually on the phone to one another. Apparently, um, to make it more realistic, uh, they actually just rang each other up on the phone. Which, you know, that's all well yeah. and good, I suppose. Yeah. I don't I don't know how much more realistic it would really make it. I, d- I don't know how much it affected their performances. but I mean, I suppose, I suppose it's, a bit, a bit. it's a bit easier if you can actually talk to the person, I guess. Mm. Um, I suppose so. That's a good phone conversation. Uh, I, you know, it was it was it was pretty good dialogue, and it was it was, you know, they finally meet and reconcile and talk about what happened after the war and stuff like that. That's the uh, it's it's interesting seeing the Doctor, who up until this point has been completely alone, in terms of yeah. you know, well he's not been alone. He's just been, he's been with other human beings, but he hasn't had anyone that understands really what yeah what he went through um it's just a shame that the person who does understand is a psychotic lunatic um <laughs> yes yes but yeah uh i was gonna say something there oh i'm sure it was gonna be good it was um <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of um lucy saxon do we like her do we hate her 
I don't I, I don't really know what to make of of mm. Lucy because Okay. Spoilers in the next episode. Uh <laughs> it seems that she is at the very least abused by him mm. and has like, had enough and just decides to kill him. So I but there's like there's some cryptic dialogue where it's like but he was so good to my father and he said no, I made my choice. D- did the master kill her parents or something like that? And I, ooh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was. Oh, maybe. Oh, a hot, hot, spicy take. Maybe the master sort of functionally bought Lucy off of her parents in a in a strange yeah, way. Yeah, maybe. He was so good to my father in that he saved the family house from falling into ruin, or he did X, Y, Z, and yeah. and therefore my father just sort of said, yeah, well, we'll take Lucy, who gives a shit? Yeah. Um, I don't know. And if that's the case, then perhaps Lucy did have a fairly sort of neglected upbringing, which I suppose would lead to her having the kind of self-esteem issue that would like make her more easily manipulatable by someone like the master. Yeah. So... Maybe I do. I, I do like that she's like a an obvious parallel to Rose, in mm. that it's a human companion that's supposedly, you know, in love with a a time lord. I, I like that. I like the idea that the master could maybe like sense that and is doing it as a cruel sort of joke almost, as mm. if to say, mm. "Oh, you," because like, he he clearly hates human beings. As well, yeah. like he calls them. He, he calls us like degenerates and stunted apes and things like that. So it's like I think it makes sense for his character to have someone. Oh look, I can have my little plaything as well, you know, um, which is just horrible and it adds another layer to that sort of reckless, you know, malevolence about him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um. I don't know how the reporter is like, yeah, oh, I've got plenty of research on you. Yeah, good family, not especially bright, <laughs> but essentially hard. Like, where, where are you researching this? Is there like a... Is yeah. there some kind of state list of, like, the IQ of every person in the country? Yeah. I don't know, I've, I've looked it up. Uh, you have an IQ of uh, 80 or 90, something slightly below average. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, she maybe she said in an interview one time, yeah, I'm as... I'm as Dumb as soup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm thick. thick as a bag of rocks. Me, yeah. <laughs> I I could not think my way out of a paper bag. I I'm thick. Yeah. Maybe maybe she did. It's hard to say. Maybe. Um, I like that. I mean, uh, I yeah. I, I get I get they can't really like go into it because it's like another episode. But the master uh, launches an archangel network that dupes the entire world into thinking that he's always lived there and mm. kills his entire cabinet without anyone knowing or realising and s- says that they've went into seclusion. What the fuck does that mean? If, yeah. Yeah, she even said that. She's like, I mean, what does that mean? Seclusion. Um, and Lucy's like, how should I know? And it's like, well, you're, you're his husband. But, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting how easy they make it to get to the top of of government and I wish they did a little bit more world building on that but there's I understand that there's a lot to to talk about and a lot to sort of get through before you can mm-hmm. um although I suppose you can I could sort of see it happening it, 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 someone only been on the scene for 18 months but he's got just the right friends in just the right places you can sort of imagine a meteoric rise from yeah. just some bloke to prime minister in 18 months you can imagine that yeah you, yeah true you do get these like, people who are like Oh, you have no idea who they are, and then they do something like shoot down the Rachnos, and then yes, everyone's yeah, like, "Oh course, shit, yeah. who's this?" And then, but obviously, there's there's that satellite network that keeps people sort of duped a wee bit. Um, mm. um, I like that they start messing with the master being a bit psychic. Sort of, um, I know it's you know it's the phones. Everybody loves him because of the phones and all the rest of it. Mm. But um, I do like um, the idea that. Um, because obviously we've had examples of the Doctor being a bit psychic and yeah. can, uh, do all that sort of bits and bobs. So it stands to reason that it's um, a sort of a Time Lord genetic trait or something they learn at the Academy, perhaps. Mm. Um, it, it stands to reason that the Master can sort of 
fiddle about with people's brains and be like, ooh, but actually, you love me, way, and I am now amazing, and you're going to give me a million pounds. Yeah. Because uh, if you were psychic and you were a, a sort of a l- lunatic, that's what you would do. Yeah. <laughs> you would um, You would get, right, I want to set my sights on XYZ prize. Who do I have to mind wash to, 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 to get from here to there? Yeah. Um... It's time for me to go on my anti Tenth Doctor rant. Uh, oh, hey. So the Doctor is here to not kill him, but to save him. And I feel that this this version of the Doctor has the need to sort of let his enemies do shit, like horrific right. stuff, and then sort of come in at the end and say, I have the moral high ground. And you know, you shouldn't have done that. And it's like, yeah, okay, fine. But, but maybe you have stopped him the whole time? Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe you could just, uh, you know, stopped him just a wee, a wee bit, you know? Mm, um, mm. The same with the family of blood. He let that happen. And it's like, oh, he was being kind. It's like, well, not really, because a lot of people fucking died <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> if he could just... Did die. If he could have just stopped them instantly. But, I mean, maybe, maybe he can't do that with the Master because he's a mm. bit more difficult. Um, yeah, maybe. Which I can't understand because there is an emotional tie between the two of them as yeah. well. So I, I do kind of get that with the master. I get that. Um, but then on the same level, it's like um, it's like the Batman take on ethics, which is perhaps one of the worst takes on ethics in the entire yeah, world. Yeah. Of um, no, I can't kill anybody because then I will be a killer. Okay, but if you just walk up to the Joker and shoot him in the head, then he's not gonna like go around killing hundreds of people a year anymore yeah but if you throw him into arkham asylum with its revolving door policy then he isn't going to be out again in a week and he'll be murdering again so uh, is there not some sense batman in sort of a a greater good for a greater number of people maybe yeah no okay look look batman what is it oh there's that animated version where he's like oh no it'd be too damned easy i've only ever wanted to kill him but if i do that if i go down into that place I'll never come back. It's like, well, I mean, you, you've literally killed like aliens and shit. You know, like he's when he was like fighting with the Justice League and stuff. He's like blown up ships and stuff like that. So it's mm. it's always really weird the way the way it like, works. If you get me, it's always very sort of. I don't know how to say it. Um weaselly with the with the ethics of people that say I will yeah, never yeah. I will never kill but like the same people will blow up a star destroyer <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean yeah that's true it's uh, well those not those those lives don't matter they were all red shirts from star trek they're just some some mannequin with a with a face it yeah exactly we yeah. didn't we didn't see it it's not like you know one pair he's not like got a gun to his head and saying I'm going to kill you so that's okay i guess it reminds me of. Um, have you ever seen the um, that th- that uh, proposed idea of um, implanting nuclear codes within someone's heart? Have you heard this? Um, no. It was a, a something put together, uh, put forward by. I think it was a professor of ethics uh, in the U.S. I might not be entirely sure, but the idea was that um, a volunteer would would volunteer themselves, and then have uh, the nuclear launch codes in like a little capsule or whatever uh, implanted within their body somewhere they would have to put it on a vital organ or something um, and they would carry around with them at all times a big knife Um, and then if the president wanted to launch the missiles he would have to take the knife off them and physically cut them open and get the code out and kill them Um, and it was it was uh, turned down because it was but then the president would have to kill someone well yeah, are the nuclear uh, bombs if, uh, not? Do, do you know what I mean? But yeah, I think the point like he was trying to the... make was um, blood on the carpet. It's it's reality brought home sort of thing. Yeah. If that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, it's um, yeah. we're seeing um, uh, like in that episode uh, where they're hunting down Amy at Demon's Run, uh, and uh, the Doctor hunt uh, explodes a billion cyber ships or whatever. So, well, yeah, but they were all guys, so yeah, <laughs> you, you can't say all life is sacred and then just blow them all up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, look, the idea that it's like, you know, a president ordering like, drone strikes isn't murder is like, no, come on. It is murder, it yeah. It absolutely is. Like, whether whether it's... Like, I'm not saying like, a drone strike can never like, be justified. I mean, a lot of cases they're not. Most of the cases they're not. But, like, you know, if you're going to do that, 
You can't then say, no, I didn't kill anyone. You know, it's like, no, you, 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 you are responsible for it. It is you that mm-hmm. made that decision. And similarly with... Like, Stephen Moffat sort of changed his view on that. He was going to... You know, do you remember that episode of Town Called Mercy? Uh, yes, I do. G- which I quite liked, if yeah, I remember it rightly. I, I, I did, re- I did like it. You know the guy who played Pete and Gavin and Stacey. Yes, he, li- yes, he, li- he was um, he ex- with the squiggles on his face. Yeah, yeah, he experimented on people and all that. And the doctor's like, "I'm going to shoot you." And Amy's like, "We have to be better than him." And then like, a couple of seasons later, when Peter Capaldi's the doctor, Clara's like, "No, you have to fucking kill the master because like she she destri- she killed hundreds of people. Get a fucking shot before I do it." And yeah, he's like, yeah. Okay, no bother. You know, um, <laughs> and and then. <laughs> I'm just going to Google the number for a good firing squad. Yeah, and then he's saved from that moral decision by Brigadier Leth Bridge Stewart, who's like a Cyberman. And it's like, wow, what a big fucking copper. Imagine the doctor having to like, deal with the actions. I know, I know. Oh, it's so shit. Um, That's the thing that um, I sort of quite like about the doctor, is it's um, all life is valuable and life is sacred and life is important in, a, in a, any of its forms, whether it's a bacteria or a bloke <laughs> it's it's all important um but for the sake of sort of the overall good sometimes you do have to make an ultimate sacrifice yeah. and kill somebody sometimes you do have to yeah and that's what i sort of like about it is it's never the first choice but it is often seen as a choice that might have to be taken if needs must yeah my favorite my favorite sort of iteration of that I- ideology is when bill let um realizes for the first time that the doctor has killed and seen and has seen people die mm. and she's like very understandably upset because she'd like never seen that before and yeah she's like how many people have you killed and he's like i care bill but i move on and then she's like oh that is and then he's like i'm two thousand years old and if i don't move on then more people will die like you you make mistakes and you do what you have to do but if you just decide no i'm never going to stop daleks and the master from killing millions of people then it's like well what what is it you're supposed to do you know um yeah there are there are people out there that that can't be talked down you can't just give a good speech sometimes and then they just stop being malevolent you know um and in this case, as well, as we find out in the next episode. Um, in, indeed we do. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to desperately remember the next episode. Yeah, because, um, spoilers for a show that came out in 2007 or something. Was it seven, I think? 2007, yeah, but yeah, the master dies, doesn't he? Um, well, yeah, sort of. Yeah, <coughs> um, why, are we sil- why are we silent? I don't entirely know, but I quite enjoyed it. Sorry, I was looking for looking through the IMDb page to quickly find out what year it was thinking. Um, okay, so I'm running out of um, a, a, a long list of uh, things I've got here. Have you got anything that sounds good or looks good? In terms of like, questions and stuff? Yes. Um, not really. Uh, I see, I see. I, uh, I like that David Tennant becomes an old man. That's okay. that's cool, I guess. But mm. like I'm very concerned about the aging process and how like mm-hmm. what's the word? Non canon A it is <laughs> because Okay. <laughs> because it's like the way that the way that time is like mentioned for how the doctor ages is like really mm. weird. So like a hundred years turns him into an old man in his current regeneration form. Yes. But also... Yes! The, 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 <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. When, when Matt Smith is shot in season six, he invites himself to his death. Yeah, and, and he's 200 years old. Yeah, look, what the... F- mm, which I watched that episode just, just recently, actually. I'm... I'm on a bit. I'm. I'm going to bring it up in the main podcast. But yeah, yeah, he is two hundred years older on the beach, and he looks the same. Yeah. So it's like yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how that. Works. But then also, Matt Smith ages. Isn't it like a thousand years he spends on a planet called Christmas or whatever it was? Yeah. And then he's an old man, and he's dying of old age. Yeah, David Tennant and... looks older than him. 
lit here yeah. than he did in that episode. <laughs> That's a good point. Maybe I mean I'm just trying to come up with any explanation now, but maybe it's something. Maybe it's like um technology that was designed for humans it's made him oh. human old and not time lord old i don't know i'm i like trying to trying to explain yeah. things in universe the reality is that it's just yeah. it's just something that people didn't think of isn't it i can't wait and don't talk a lot of shite um, <laughs> that's my favorite quote from uh, a show called still game where mm. they're talking to this politician on the radio and he's like well st- statistically speaking the list is getting shorter and this old man just interjects. He's like, "I can't wait. Don't talk a lot of shit." Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I like that we we brought back Professor Lazarus. Uh, that technology. Yes. Yeah. 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 That that was that was interesting, and and Mister Saxon had been alluded to the entire show, uh, but not like in season eight where literally shows up at the end of every episode where someone dies and it's oh, like, God, yeah. hello, I'm Missy, you know. Um, did I, you fall or what did you push? I couldn't see. Did my boyfriend be mean to you? Oh, because he loves. <laughs> and I'm going to go into an English accent now. And now I'm Scottish again. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I, I. I'm not having a go at Michelle Gomez. I'm just. I'm just ranting. Um, but yeah, I think I, see. Well, I, I think I'm definitely out of notes. Now. Yeah, I think I'm definitely out of notes. I think I think we were out of notes at the silent moment a while ago that that people will have checked their phones and been like, um, "Is this actually still playing?" Oh, okay, these fuckwits. What if they're, they're listening? They just stopped talking for some reason. Uh, what if they're listening on their phones, Lewis? What? What, what do you mean? You said, "Oh, they're going to check their phones." What if they're listening yeah. on their phones? That's what I meant. They're gonna look at their phone and go, "Oh, oh shit!" They aren't still Shut talking. up. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. What? All right, come on. We're, we're we're losing momentum. We're making terrible jokes. Let's. Have we got the closing statement. Isn't that? That was my statement. That could be our epitaph, Lewis. Um. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> we're this... running out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this episode was good. Um. Shame about the next one. Um, oh, I didn't realise Danny felt that way. Um, oh. I look forward to talking about that next week. Yes. That's my closing statement that I just wrote. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Oh, let's do some credits. Quick. Okay. Uh, we all have Quick. Linked- oh, Quick, Danny. Shut the fuck up. We all have link trees. Uh, Lewis's link tree is linked to e slash Lewis underscore Brindley. Mine's a slash Ohiram. And the podcast is slash Shouting Into The Void. There you will find our socials, our YouTube, our Instagram, our Facebook. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Give us a comment if you're feeling cheeky. And yeah, we have a PayPal donate button. So anything you can spare, anything at all would be greatly uh, appreciated and i'm gonna go slow for this one because this is oh, really important it's gonna be sultry he's yeah. gonna be slow really it's yeah. gonna be endearingly silky really in his tone of voice yeah really 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 calm and we've got patreon um <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank our patrons as we do every week for their wonderful support uh chloe thank you darius thank you peter thank you aditya Thank you. Natalie. Thank you. And Doogie. Thank you, one and all. You allow us to make the show that we love to make, and uh, right now we're doing lots of exciting different bits and bobs that we're only able to do because you are helping us, and you are helping us to uh, to afford and to fund all the things we do. So thank you very much, one and all, for helping us to make this show. We really do adore, adore it. Uh, and if you would like to join their illustrious ranks of patrons, it can go to uh, Shouting Into The Void. No, hang on patreon.com slash shouting into the void and there you'll find our patreon you can have a look at the tiers and go wow this is really good um so please do that absolutely and we also have merch on teespring and redbubble uh we sell tote bags jumpers uh, socks mugs stickers christmas is round the corner it literally is by the time you hear this we're in december so get yeah your, get, Whoa, bloody hell get your wallets out for big daddy capitalism <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, and uh, last but certainly not least, we are partnered with an amazing company called Number 12 Crochet Avenue, and Lewis is going to say some wonderful things about them, all of which are true. Indeed I am. Number 12 Crochet Avenue is a wonderful company run by my wonderful wife, in which they crochet and they're very, very good at it. Uh, In fact, it was my birthday a couple of days ago, and my wife crocheted me, quite frankly, the perfect thing that I have wanted for ages. It's an incredibly niche thing, uh, but I, I, when I'm sat at my desk, I am in just the right place to get a breeze, which is great in the summer, terrible in the winter, so I'm freezing my arse off. So... Uh, I asked my wife to make me a blanket, and she made me the perfect sized blanket. It's perfect. Um, I So, please, go and check out uh, at number 12 Crochet Avenue on Instagram. You can see what's going on over there. Okay, uh, thank you very much. 
Do it now. <clears throat> uh, yeah. That's us. That's us indeed. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Um, good evening, good afternoon, and good night, or whatever he says in that movie. Fuck's sake. Uh, the next episode is Last of the Time <laughs> Lords. Tune in, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of death in this one. Well, hey, death! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Goodbye! Bye! <laughs>